Let Eastern take you to the Bahamas sun. All here in the Bahamas. You have a lot to do. Eastern, we're the one to the Bahamas sun. Hi, it's back Four days, three nights in the Bahamas from $313, including airfare and hotel. Call your travel agent or Eastern. Watch the special parade for Dr. J, 11.30 a.m. tomorrow. Action News, Delaware Valley's leading news program with Gary Papa and Rob Jennings. Sunday night, they're setting the stage for the Channel 6 parade honoring Dr. J. And there's a new twist tonight to the custody fight over little Rachel Rouser. But the big story in Action News tonight is violence that shut down the Great Adventure Amusement Park. A teenager was injured when a gunman began firing randomly into a crowd. Two other teens were stabbed in separate incidents. And seven other people were injured in fights or were pushed off rides. All but two have been released from hospitals. The remaining two are in satisfactory condition tonight. Police say the violent incidents were all unrelated, and they are looking for suspects tonight. Great Adventure says its security was adequate today, but it may be beefed up in the future. A Philadelphia police officer was hospitalized tonight, and police say he may have been hit by his own police cruiser. It happened at 42nd in Mantua, West Philadelphia. Lawman found the semi-conscious officer lying on the street. Police say the injured officer, 26-year-old Lance Jones, was responding to a call of a possible gunman. No suspect was found in the area. Police are still trying to piece it all together. Meanwhile, Officer Jones is hospitalized in stable condition. Well, the EPA says it's safe to breathe the air in South Philadelphia despite today's big chemical leak. Noxious fumes began pouring from the Ashland Company plant just before midnight last night and continued to leak into the air much of the day. The fumes forced the evacuation of the plant, several nearby businesses, and several ships docked on the Delaware River. The leak also closed the Walt Whitman Bridge until 2.30 this afternoon. That resulted in huge traffic tie-ups on the Ben Franklin. The fumes came from a 4,500-gallon tank of styrene, which can cause irritations but is not toxic. The EPA will continue to monitor the air near the plant. Another big story, a joyous Easter Sunday, and Christians celebrated Christ's victory over death. The biggest Easter service had to be this one in Rome, where Pope John Paul II celebrated Mass with nearly 200,000 people in St. Peter's Square. John Paul proclaimed Easter greetings in 50 languages and appealed for human rights worldwide and told the world that love is more powerful than death. Church bells were ringing in the ancient city of Jerusalem today to mark the holiday. Israeli officials say there is a resurgence in the number of visitors. Fear of terrorism kept many away last year. And here in the Delaware Valley, Christians worshipped in different ways, but they were all celebrating the same thing, the message of forgiveness and love through Jesus Christ. All around town and around the world, Christians of all denominations celebrated the joyous Easter holiday. At the Cathedral Basilica in Center City, Catholics gathered as John Cardinal Kroll celebrated the Mass of the Resurrection. Even today's overcast weather didn't cloud the spirits of those who came to share the joy of Christ's resurrection. He was always there for us, and I figured that we should always be there for him. In Spring Garden, Ukrainian Catholics gathered at the Immaculate Conception Cathedral for a very special Easter service. Their prayers and chants were heard across the Atlantic by persecuted Ukrainian Catholics in the Soviet Union. The Mass was broadcast live by Voice of America to Ukrainian Catholic faithfuls, whose church has been liquidated by Soviet authorities. For some here, the simulcast brought special meaning to Easter services. It's very good, because over there they, they need something like this, because over there they can't, they can't do stuff like this here. They're restricted to what they do. At Mount Olivet Tabernacle Baptist Church in West Philadelphia, little girls donned their bonnets, and the choir sounded the theme of this holy day. The Easter theme was echoed here at Christ Episcopal Church, the state's oldest church founded in 1695 was packed today as the Right Reverend Alan Lyman Bartlett, the Bishop of Pennsylvania, conducted services. Although Easter is celebrated by Christians in many different ways, the holiday's meaning is constant. It's the Christian way of recognizing and thanking Jesus who died for their sins.
Dwayne Jackson, Channel 6 Action News. This Easter Sunday, a Delaware Valley church took the first step toward rising from the ashes of a devastating fire. A groundbreaking ceremony was held today for the rebuilding of the Trinity Episcopal Church in Ambler. Last June, a seven-alarm fire swept through the 85-year-old house of worship, gutting the building. It'll cost several million to rebuild. And it was an Easter service filled with thanks today at a Westchester church hit by fire. Last Thursday's blaze gutted the parish hall at the Church of the Holy Trinity. But fortunately, the fire spared the main sanctuary, and that is where today's Easter services were held. Members of the congregation gave thanks that the fire did not take a heavier toll at their church. A new development tonight in the custody battle over little Rachel Rouser. She is the South Jersey girl whose father allegedly tried to sell her to her aunt and uncle. Gary and Deborah Stern, who have been caring for Rachel at their home in Florida, now say that the girl's father, Joseph Waltman, is giving them permission to adopt Rachel. It should tell the courts that there's no question in their mind who the only living parent wants to raise the child one. And obviously, if he decided on us, it must show them the doubt that he has in his own wife her ability to raise the child. The Stearns are due back in court tomorrow to appeal a ruling which ordered them to relinquish custody of Rachel to her stepmother, Cynthia Waltman. This has been a weekend filled with anti-Semitic vandalism at a Cherry Hill Country Club. Today, for the second day in a row, members of the largely Jewish Woodcrest Country Club discovered the graffiti. Yesterday, it was swastikas and obscenities spray-painted on the clubhouse. Today, more vandalism discovered on the golf course green. Club officials who have offered a $1,000 reward for the arrest of the suspects say they're now going to have to sandblast the clubhouse walls. A New Jersey state trooper continues to fight for his life after his cruiser was forced off the road. It happened early today on the Garden State Parkway in Holmdale, Monmouth County. State police say troopers Joseph Erb and Christopher Hughes were trying to stop a speeding car when that auto forced their cruiser off the road and into a guardrail. Herb's in critical condition. Hughes is listed as fair. Police are looking for a blue Buick Electra, early 70s model, jersey plates, and damage to the left side. The cab drivers at Philadelphia International Airport did not stop picking up passengers today, as some of them threatened to do. They are not happy about a new system of having to wait in a holding area before being called out by a dispatcher, and their plans to charge the drivers each time they have to go into the waiting area. The drivers we heard from today said since it was a busy holiday, there was money to be made and that they might stage a work stoppage tomorrow to protest the new rules. And tomorrow, the city of Philadelphia pays tribute to Julius Irving with a big parade and celebration. Channel 6 will be televising that parade for you. And Action News reporter Lauren Madelon says everything is in place to honor a living legend. So, got it. Fantastic. Crews from Channel 6 have been hard at work setting up their equipment and getting everything ready for the salute to Dr. J. We all know it's something special, you know, so uh, we put a little more effort into it. Fans, forever and a day, thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you didn't get a chance to say goodbye to the doc during Friday night ceremonies at the Spectrum, you still have another chance. Join the entire Channel 6 family for the salute to Dr. J parade. The parade will kick off at 11.30 in the morning from 20th and Market, wind its way down Market Street and around City Hall, and end up at JFK Plaza an hour and a half later. Our coverage will start at 11.30 and will be anchored by Jim Gardner and Don Tollefson. The rest of the Action News team will be there every step of the way. So will many of you who say the doc represents all good things. Courage, strength, dignity, um, everything you know it, it, it's it's hard to say because a man like dr j you just you know you just can't describe him in one word today in landover maryland at the capitol sports center the doc was honored before his last regular season game before the sixers took on the bullets just as people here said goodbye so can you tomorrow i'm a teacher and i'll probably have a television on in my classroom tomorrow watching you guys i guess When you talk about Dr. J, you're talking about a man who has clearly transcended athletics to become a treasure for all people, whether or not they've even ever been to a basketball game. So do join us tomorrow to say goodbye to Dr. J, the basketball player, and hello to Dr. J, the man who will hopefully remain a fixture on the Philadelphia scene for many, many years to come. Lorne Madelon, Channel 6, Action News.
And still ahead on Action News tonight, Gary Popple looks back at Dr. J's last regular season game along with the rest of the Sunday sports. And how do you celebrate your 50th wedding anniversary for one Northeast Philadelphia couple? It was with their entire original wedding party. More news and AccuWeather's forecast when Action News comes right back. It's a powerful driving force moving people all across the country. It's GMC Truck, and it's handling tough jobs every day. And now, full-size pickup trucks have extra values. Get automatic transmission at no extra charge on all 1987 GMC full-size pickup trucks. Plus, get air conditioning at no extra charge on specially equipped models. A $1,500 value. And see your dealer for details on low GMAC financing. GMC Truck. It's not just a truck anymore. See your GMC Truck dealer today. Me a I'll send you more than one. Years of waiting and planning. Time to go. Then the thing you dreamed about is real. Why do I feel like a new bride? Whatever your financial needs, Nationwide Insurance can help give blanket protection from life insurance to mutual funds and retirement plans. You're gonna love it. So you'll be ready for anything. What a way to start a thrill. Original, huh? Gene Stapleton stars in the emotional story, Aunt Mary. What do you want? I want to know why you're messing with things that don't concern you. I'm not going to stand by and wait for these cretins to hurt somebody, especially you. My coaching days are over, Nicholas. Unless you want to learn how to ride a wheelchair. I never thought you'd be a quitter. Hey, <laughs> those creeps are going to get slaughtered. Hey, where are you going to get a team from? Aunt Mary, tonight, after Action News. In Oakland, California tonight, two people are dead after the driver of a car became impatient at a railroad crossing, passed two stopped cars, and drove directly into the path of an Amtrak train doing 60 miles an hour. Police say the 19-year-old driver and his 38-year-old passenger were killed instantly. The 333 people on the train weren't injured. Amtrak officials say all of the safety devices at the crossing were checked out and found to be working perfectly. Meanwhile, a tanker truck carrying diesel fuel exploded near Atlantic Beach, North Carolina, when it swerved to avoid a car that drove into its path. The accident happened on this high-rise bridge that had just opened Friday, and it left traffic at a standstill for more than an hour. The driver of the truck was pulled to safety by two passers-by and is in critical condition tonight with 60% burns on his body. A somber anniversary in Sweetwater, Texas this Easter Sunday as residents there took time to reflect and give thanks for the past year. It was one year ago that a twister tore through the town, killing one person and causing a million dollars in damages. Sweetwater's mayor says the twister came without warning. At this time last year, or at that time last year, we just had no idea what we were fixing to be in for. You know, things were rocking along smooth, things were nice and peaceful in our community, and all of a sudden the bottom just fell out. We just had a situation that was a lot more than what we could handle. With the help of government loans, residents have spent about $2 million rebuilding since last year's twister. Near Corpus Christi, Texas, it could have been a scene right out of a horror movie, but this shark attack was real, and it cost a girl one of her arms. A Coast Guard helicopter airlifted the Kingsland teenager from the beach to Memorial Medical Center in Corpus Christi. Paramedics at the scene reported the girl's right arm was severed about six inches below the shoulder. She had lost quite a bit of blood. The paramedics reported she was conscious and alert after the attack. They say the girl's mother probably saved her daughter's life by applying first aid before help could arrive. The attack occurred in about four feet of water along this stretch of beach on Mustang Island, about 10 miles south of Port Aransas. The girl and her father were wading about 75 feet out into the surf shortly before 6 when the father saw the shark attacking the teenager. Uh, he immediately made his way to his daughter, grabbed her, and started beating on the shark. Uh, as he grabbed her, the shark severed the right arm approximately uh, six inches below the shoulder blade. Matthew says attacks like these are rare in this area. He says that's why he sees no need at this time to close the beach or issue any special warnings. This attack has stunned local officials, and there's some concern over the effect it will have on the huge Easter weekend crowds which have been filling area beaches, hotels, and condominiums. Officials say they don't want to cover up the attack, but they don't want to start a shark scare either. This is Lee Dunkelberg reporting. J.G. Tucker and Osea Cooper grew up next door to each other. They fell in love and later got married. That was 70 years ago. J.G. and Osea had a happy life working together every day in their hatchery and dairy in Hartsville, Tennessee. 
People said they were sweethearts all their lives, all 70 years together. They had five children. Wherever you found one, you found the other. They did everything together. Early Friday morning, 93-year-old Osea died of cancer. And early yesterday morning, less than 24 hours later, J.G. Tucker also died of cancer. To the very end, whatever they did, they did together. Get the Atlantic difference, a 6.3% yield on Atlantic six-month CDs. Call 1-800-4-ATLANTIC or visit your nearest branch, Atlantic Financial. For 3.9% financing. For tag back. Time's running out at your Pontiac Pace Center. From award winning Bonneville to hot selling Grand Am. 3.9% GMAC financing on any new Pontiac you buy, even if you've never had credit before. Or up to $1,200 cash back, buy or lease. You must take actual retail delivery from dealer stock by April 30th. 3.9% financing or cash back. Now's your last chance at your Pontiac Pace Center. Hmm, this tastes like Carvel ice cream, but it really is an ice cream. Darling, that's a contradiction. Mm, and it's made fresh at Carvel. Mmm, tell me more. And it only has 18 and a half calories per fluid ounce. Well, you gonna give me some? It comes in lots of flavors and even in cake. What is it? Feed me, feed me. <laughs> it's Thinny Thin, a dietary frozen dessert, and I got it at Carvel. Thinny Thin? Yeah, Thinny Thin, for fatty fats like you. Now, come on, give me some. <laughs> okay, here, it's all yours. Hey, you finished it! <laughs> Nin hurt too, and as I sit here and I listen to this and was, was uh, preparing for the show about it, I say, how absolutely stupid of me to have thought that men don't go through this too. I would take your thinking even a step further. I would say... To say you're even more stupid than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, doctor, not, thank not, you. Not at all. I, I would suggest that the rejector, the mm -hmm. person who does the rejecting, can feel as much love shock, believe it or not, as even the person who is Watch rejected. the Oprah Winfrey Show tomorrow at 4. Gary Papa now with sports. It's hard to believe. It's ended right before our very eyes. Jo uh, Julius Serving has played his last game, regular season regular game. Regular season, now into the playoffs. That's right. He certainly knows how to put on a great goodbye performance. 24 points in all for Julius, his final regular season game. Before the game, honored by the Washington Bullets, some words from an old friend. When I first came to Fitter, that was the man. I was just a part of the team. And the only way we could win the championship because of Doc, because he was a great family to the team. Uh, he kept everybody together, and we're looking forward to win. And with the addition of Doc and his family, it's a great privilege to see Doc. It's, it's always going to be number one man in the ABA and the NBA, because Doc was the man. All right. Ben Julius was given a toy rocket by Sugar Ray Leonard, also named Ambassador of Basketball by the United States Congress. Now, he didn't need that rocket today to fly, as in the game itself, he was on fire. 15 points in the second half. Watch him underneath here. 24 points in all. 1,005 for his career. Does he still have it? Watch this move. 30,026 for his career. Sixers win it 108-102. They head off to the playoffs. Game one will be Friday at Milwaukee. It is a best of seven series. To baseball, Phillies unable to sweep the Pirates. Lost 5-2. Offense was asleep. Like this gentleman in Pittsburgh, you're missing a good game. Glenn Wilson singles in Mike Eastler. Watch Mike motor in for the Phillies' first run of the ball game in time. Glenn Wilson triples. He later on scored on a sacrifice fly that ties up the ball game at 2-2 at Three Rivers. But then the Pirates clean up their act. Yes, they do. <laughs> Sid Brain hits a home run off Bruce Ruffin. This was the winning hit today. Mike Schmidt booted a ball at third base for yet another Pirate run as Pittsburgh wins by that final 5-2. Mike, by the way, was 0 for 3 today at the plate. Three strikeouts. Tomorrow, the Phillies play in the afternoon at Montreal. Expos defeated Chicago 3-1. Now, when Andy McGaffigan comes too close to Shawan Dunstan of the Cubs, Shawan wants to get close to Andy McGaffigan. Now, watch the move by McGaffigan on the mound. He knows that Dunstan is coming after him. He ducks at the right moment. <laughs> Perfect timing. Montreal won the ball game 3-1. In St. Louis, Mets catcher Barry Lyons goes after a foul ball. He slams into John Tudor, the cards, who was just sitting in the dugout, not even in the ball game. Yet he broke a bone in his knee. He's oh. out for two months. St. Louis won the ball game 4-2. Can you believe it? Also in the National, Houston and Cincinnati, a Sunday split. Dodgers defeated San Diego. San Francisco wins it 4-3. To, to the American Magic in Milwaukee, losing 4-1 to Texas, bottom of the ninth inning, 
Brewers, 11-game winning streak, definitely in trouble, but they tie it up. Then with two outs, Dale Swam hits a home run. They win it 6-4. They set an American League record, that of winning 12 games in a row to start off the season. And tomorrow in Chicago, they go after a major league record of 13 wins in a row. Break up the Brewers. Also in the American, Yankees took two from KC. Cleveland likewise with Baltimore. Boston won 4-1. Chicago defeated Detroit. Minnesota wins at 6-5. Seattle over Oakland 8-1. Flyers set to host the Islanders tomorrow. It's the start of round two for the playoffs. Flyers working out this morning, knowing the Islanders were sleeping because they had to go until 4, 2 o'clock this morning to defeat the Capitals. How's that going to affect the Islanders Come tomorrow? Off a big win. They're going to have a lot of the momentum to, uh, going into our series. And uh, right now, I... We're just gearing up to do our own thing, and we're not worried about what the Islanders are going to do. Yeah, this is what they did last night, though. The winning goal by Fat Pat LaFontaine, four overtimes. They finally won it 3-2, a wild one. We have lots more about that game, plus a lot more of other memorable events. Where else do you find it but on the weekend wrap-up? It seemed like an endless night as the Islanders and Capitals were tied at two in overtime for 68 minutes of sudden death. That plus the 60 minutes of regulation means that they played 128 minutes of hockey. That is more than two full games rolled into one. The toll was really felt by the goaltenders. Bob Mason, brilliant for the Capitals, stopping 54 shots. Kelly Rudy for the Islanders was also brilliant, stopping 73, although he doesn't remember everyone. Sometimes I was finding myself just doing things, and then I was wondering, I'd, I'd look up at the, the clock, and i go, this is the sixth period already? I wouldn't even know it. It's just so crazy. Even the announcers became unglued. This is ESPN's second overtime intermission. Well, I thought the game was yesterday, and here it is Easter today. <laughs> Thankfully, it all ended around 2 o'clock in the morning with Pat LaFontaine's goal. It is 3-2 Islanders. Not a baseball. Holy cow, Harry Carey. But Harry has suffered a stroke this year and is not able to announce the games for the Cubs or sing during the seventh inning stretch. In his place was comedian Bill Murray this weekend. He's funny and also definitely biased. Starting for the Expos in left field, Casey Kandel. He's no good. Oh, gee, it was too bad he didn't slip and fall. Okay, Bill, but of course the call of the weekend was, it's out of here. Mike at the plate, Harry Callis in the radio booth, Saturday afternoon, ninth inning in Pittsburgh. Here's the stretch by Robinson. The 3-0 pitch. Langelong drive! There it is! Number 500! The career 500th home run for Michael Jack Smith! That home run came less than 24 hours after Julius Irving scored his 30,000th career point. So it's Mike and Julius sharing the spotlight this weekend. And a couple of days we're never gonna forget. weekend in sports, to say the least. And it's not over. Tomorrow's big parade That's for Dr. Sir, J. We'll be there. It was a chocolate lover's garden of delights today at the Hershey Hotel in Philadelphia. The hotel's award-winning pastry chef prepared chocolate sculptures, especially for this Easter Sunday. Brunch guests were joined by Peter Picasso, Beach Bunny, and the Hershey Express, complete with seven boxcars filled with holiday candy. The chocolate creations recently won gold and silver medals at the Baltimore Food Show. But this feast was just for the eyes, for display only. You could look, but you'd better not munch. Nothing could be more spectacular than Vianetta ice cream dessert. With creamy folds of rich ice cream and deliciously crisp chocolatey layers, Vianetta is positively irresistible. And introducing new Vianetta Petites in individual servings, perfect for one or two. New from Good Humor. Every 34 seconds, somebody buys a new Chevy Cavalier. 
In fact, before this day is through, over 1,000 people will drive away in new Cavaliers. There goes another one. With performance radials, gas shocks, and fuel injection, the Celebrity Eurosport has many of the same features of the high-priced German road cars, except one, their high price. Guess which radio station more people are listening to while they work? People. The answer is Easy 101. Easy 101 plays your favorite songs of yesterday and today in a uniquely relaxing way. So tomorrow, while you're working and you feel a need to relax, where do you turn? Easy 101. Listen while you work. My name is Doug, and it's been 16 days since my last shopping trip. Yes, I was tempted by Silo's sale, but I resisted. <laughs> At Silo's after Easter sale, everything in the store is marked down. Every stereo and appliance on sale. Every TV and VCR on sale. All those little buttons and knobs. But I made it through Silo's after Easter sale, and you can too. All right, I bought a refrigerator. <laughs> Nobody can resist the Silo sale. Nobody. <laughs> WPVI-TV, Philadelphia, serving New Jersey and Delaware. The floodwaters are starting to recede in Virginia, and now the long cleanup begins. Richmond business owner David White and his family came to see the flood damage in their Easter clothes. It was worse than I expected. I thought it was going to pass us by this time and never really took it seriously. Shops in this area are filled with several feet of water. Business owners are just now trying to pump that water out. It means like starting all over again, but like a uh, boxer, because you knock down twice, you just brush yourself up and get on and start fighting again. This is about the only cleanup effort that can be done this morning. Fire crews are spraying the debris into one central area so it can be gathered up as the water recedes. The water will be around for a while. The James River crested after midnight and has been holding steady 16 feet above flood level. One of the bridges into town is still closed, along with several roads. But even though the flood is worse than expected, damage should be minimal. I believe the damage is going to be less than what we expected because we've had almost two and a half days to prepare for the flood. In Richmond, Teresa Luce reporting. We're in an on-again, off-again weather pattern for the next 12 hours or so. Our cloud cover finally gave way to sunshine this afternoon, but the clear skies overhead now are giving way to more low clouds. AccuWeather says they'll start breaking up by about midday tomorrow. The main thing is that there is no rain forecast during tomorrow's parade. That looks good from this vantage point. 75 the high today in Philadelphia. It is now 57 degrees outside, and that becomes the 24-hour low for the day. The humidity is high. The barometer is 30, 12, and rising. And we have an east wind right now at 7. Here's AccuWeather's exclusive five-day, mostly cloudy, patchy fog in places tonight. Could be a little drizzle here and there before daybreak. Lows ranging from 50 to 54. Then cloudy and patchy fog in the morning rush hour, about 54 degrees. Those morning clouds will give way to some sunshine tomorrow. Again, the parade should go off without a hitch. There's no threat of rain. Tomorrow's high in the afternoon under sunshine, 74 degrees when the clouds finally get out of here. Some sun and 78 for Tuesday, partly sunny for Wednesday, and mostly sunny and nice for Thursday and Friday. And finally, staying married for 50 years is quite an achievement, but what may be more of an achievement, uh, achievement is bringing your entire wedding party together again 50 years later for a big celebration. Well, Saul and Mildred Kaminsky of Northeast Philadelphia did just that today as they celebrated their golden wedding anniversary. The happy couple repeated the ceremony and the reception with all their original attendants, including their flower girl, who is now 60 years old. And everyone joined in the fun to help the Kaminskys celebrate 50 happy years of marriage and here's to 50 more. The Million Dollar Movie is next on Channel 6. Action News returns at 6.15 in the morning with Elliot Rodriguez. Now for Gary Papa and the entire Action News team, I'm Rob Jennings. Good night and have a great week. From Channel 6, this has been Action News, the most watched news program in the Delaware Valley. When you see news happening, call the Action News tip line by dialing News 6. In New Jersey, dial 966-6666 or call our regional news bureaus.
There's only one candidate for mayor who can bring Philadelphia the sweeping change we need. John Egan. I'm John Egan. Like you, I'm frustrated. I'm just plain embarrassed at the way our city is run. I feel I can use my experience in business to manage this city effectively. Unlike Frank Rizzo, I'll take on union boss Earl Stout. I'm the only candidate who will bring the sweeping change we need in city government. Egan, the guts and know-how to get city government working for you. Many of us as Americans take for granted the right to be secure in our own homes. But it wasn't always this way. Before the American Revolution, colonists' homes were arbitrarily searched by the British. James Otis Jr., a Massachusetts attorney, rose to fight these searches. He argued that a man's home is his castle, that searches violated a natural right to life, liberty, and property. His words would later echo in our Declaration of Independence and in the Fourth Amendment to our Constitution. This amendment protects you from unreasonable searches and seizures, and it makes a promise that your home is your castle. Another reason to celebrate a Constitution for the people. I'm Jim Gardner. PBI-TV, Philadelphia. Welcome to the Million Dollar Movie. Tonight's feature film is a drama, Aunt Mary, starring Gene Stapleton and Martin Balsam. 